Hey, so I'm uh, John Harry. I'm a lecturer in uh, plant science and genetics at the University of Liverpool. And GM crops, so genetic modified crops, have been in the in news quite a bit recently. So I just wanted to give an overview in uh, 20, 20 quick slides about what's going on with it and the current thing. So, so let's flip it first of all, though. So GM is not this crazy stuff. So it's not fish heads on corn on the cob. It's not crazy hybrids of tomatoes and fishes. It's basic science done done in a decent way. But also, what it also isn't. Is, it's not all about big corporations. It's not all about Syngenta and Monsanto and Bayer and DuPont. It's about people doing research in, in labs, in universities, also in research institutes, doing, doing research to, to make better crops, which are, which are essentially, for the, hopefully, for the common good. So, so what is GM? Let's, let's back up a little. So molecular biology in the last 20 years has enabled us to move genes around very, very easily. So genes equal traits, essentially. So a scientist can take a gene from a pufferfish or a, a Rhabdopsis or a mouse or a, or, a, or a bacteria, move it around, and then decide what to do with it. You can put it back in the same organism. You can put it in a different organism. But essentially, because it's so relatively easy to do this now, it's, uh, genetic modification is, is, is actually quite, quite straightforward. OK, so there's two main strategies we use for GM at the moment. So you can imagine this tomato here, which, which goes soft over time. But what we can do is change the way that tomato gene works within the tomato. So over time, it won't go soft. So this is one way we can use, use GM. And a second way we can use GM is to put a, put a gene from one organism. So maybe in this sense, from a bacteria, you can put it into, a, into rice. We can produce a, a compound which produces more vitamin A. You get this golden rice. And in malnourished countries, uh, people are with, with malnourishment have less vitamin A. They can eat the rice and get more vitamin A. So GM is going, gone, the research all over the world, and a, a wide variety of organisms, cotton, canola, uh, maize, soybean, wheat, potato, rice, papaya. So most organisms, there's, there's, there are, there's, there's uh, GM going on. So why would we do GM technology? For well, first of all, resistance to diseases like uh, virus and, and, and fungal diseases, increased water usage, where we're going to have a lack of water in, in coming years, increased yield and also increase the quantity, quality. So research in GM is, is science done properly. It's not like crazy science just thrown out into the environment. It's research which is rigorously tested in the lab, uh, also in the field before it reaches the public domain. This is a GM crop which, which isn't growing very well and therefore it wouldn't, wouldn't make it into the public domain. Okay, so let's back up though. The anti-GM movement, you'll have seen them all. There's a lot of pub publicity about the anti-GM movement and they're really, really quite effective. So GM Watch, similar organizations to this. So, so really putting the negative spin on, on GM to, for, the, uh, for the public. This happens at home. You might remember there was research aimed to, uh, to make wheat resistant to aphids last year and there was this campaign uh, in the UK called Take the Flower Back, which really put GM in the public domain and tried to really, really show the kind of negative side. It happens abroad as well. So Europe is a really anti-GM state at the moment. So there's only two, two GM crops which are grown in Europe, mostly in Spain. And, uh, and it's, it's unlikely in the next five or ten years that GM is going to be uh, broadly um, established in, 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 um, in Europe. The epicenter of this is, is certainly in France. So, the, so there's, a few, there's a few labs in France which really do not like GM. And they're performing active research to prove that GM is going to be bad for human health. Causing cancer and, and, and similar things, but but we really have got a, we've had a 20-year experiment in the U.S. So 80% of the soybean and, and corn which is grown in the U.S. is, is GM, and people have been user eating it for for a long time, and, and there hasn't been any increased uh, incidences of cancer that can be linked to this sort of food. So GM is big business and big politics as well. So Greenpeace is really anti this. Uh, golden rice I talked about earlier, but what we need to do, what we need is the is the scientists to really explain what they what they need to do. So this is just from the International Rice Research Institute, which which produced this GM, and we need to explain what what needs to be done. So there's a there's a number of GM successes. So this is papaya, which is grown in um, uh, Hawaii, and it was being uh, attacked by a virus. GM papaya came along and saved the uh, the uh, the uh, the harvest and it was able to be grown correctly. So the tide is definitely turning though. So people who are educated and know about this are coming around to GM. So this guy, Mark Linus, is, was a, used to be an anti-GM campaigner. He now is, uh, is, is pro-GM, kind of had an apology to the uh, farming conference. They also, the government is going this way as well. So, so the government, a couple of months ago, really uh, said that, that farmers really need to think about embracing GM technologies because it's coming. This is what we need to do. We need to inform the public. We need a reasoned debate. We need labelled products. We'll see a financial benefit at home. People around the world will hopefully see a, a survival benefit. And, uh, and, and I think the future is going to be GM with other things. This is me, my lab. This is my website. Uh, you can follow me on Liverpool Plants. And um, 
Thank you very much. Thank you.